It's kind of crazy to think that it was 15 years ago when Valve unleashed Half-Life 2 on the world. And it's only recently that they brought some life back into the series with the announcement of a standalone VR game featuring Alex Vance. Which, all things considered, looks pretty damn awesome. But the series has been kept warm thanks to the talented modding community, and a better example of that is a mod for Half-Life 2 called M-Mod. Which brings along a whole heap of additions and modifications to the base game to make it feel more like it could have been made in our current year. Instead of the ancient history that is 2004, a time so long ago that it almost hurts to think about it. Now this mod originally came out back in December 2018, but a month or so ago it got yet another update, which improved upon the mod even further, balancing out a whole heap of issues. Just to summarize, you've got improved gunplay, new abilities for the AI, brand new weapon animations, bug fixes, and visual effects. As a mod that's only made by three guys, packed with all this content, and that happens to work across all of the main games, well, there's very little to complain about. So let's take a look at it and see what it's all about, shall we? So first and foremost, if you're one of those people who thinks that Half-Life 2 is the worst sequel ever made, yes, these people exist, well, this isn't a mod that's really going to win you over. Seems more aimed at the kind of people who've played Half-Life 2 through and through and are just looking for a reason to revisit it. In fact, you almost need to have a proper familiarity with Half-Life 2 to even notice a lot of the improvements that the mod offers. Anyway, look, here's a bit of a quick recap. The game takes place after the events of Half-Life 1 where Gordon Freeman is brought out of stasis by the G-Man after what happened at Black Mesa, to find the world has been taken over by an alien race known as the Combine. It's never explained why the G-Man brings him back, and because Valve now seem more intent on publishing games than making them, we'll probably never know either. Anyway, humanity bands together in the fictional City 17 to try and stop them, and as Gordon, you're pretty much key to their plans. In fact, you're the only one capable of doing anything, because everyone else just hides out in shipping containers with their thumbs up their ass. Now the story itself is left intact, it's the gameplay where it starts to make some modifications. And this ranges from simple things like when you sprint, now the screen shakes to make it look a bit more like contemporary shooters. You'll even hear Gordon become short of breath and see the edges of the screen fade a bit when you run out of stamina. When your health is low, there's even various screen effects to emphasize your wearying condition. All of the weapon models have been modified too, they've got different animations and shader effects and the way they handle has also been changed. There's also a few new weapons added in, though like everything else in M-Mod, it's been added in in a way that it doesn't really affect the gameplay in a massive way. The first one you're going to come across is the stun baton used by the civil protection units, which seems to do double the amount of damage as the crowbar. It's not really a groundbreaking weapon, but it's just another melee alternative if you get sick of using Gordon's crowbar. But all it's good for though is crates and man hacks, which it can often destroy in a single hit. Not that it makes those things any less annoying, they're basically the video game equivalent of a giant flying mosquito with razor blades for wings. When you hop onto one of those emplacement gun turrets, you can now dismount the gun and carry it around. This thing is definitely overpowered, especially because one of the first ones you get is during Root Canal. At a point when in the campaign, you're only supposed to have the pistol and the crowbar, so it makes those sections just way too easy. It's basically a pulse rifle that you never need to reload, at the cost of more spread when firing than your mum's legs. To balance the whole thing out though, there's no replacement ammo. It has 300 or so rounds, but you can only use what's in the weapon, then you're dry. It's probably a good thing, seeing as it does like triple the damage of the pulse rifle. During Highway 17 and Sand Traps, you can also pull the Tau Cannon off the front of the buggy and use it as a handheld weapon, which functions quite a bit like it did in Half-Life 1. It's got a shitload of ammo too and does pretty good damage. Otherwise, all of the other weapons return. The Magnum, Shotgun, MP7, Pulse Rifle, Crossbow, RPG, and Grenade. Again, with minor changes, mostly the sound effects. Animations across the board for all of these are way smoother too. Like, check out the difference between the two MP7s. It's really cool too how when you press the reload button when a weapon is fully loaded, it instead shows off this animation of Gordon brandishing the weapon, admiring it from different angles. My only complaint is that I wish there were more of these. I think the shotgun is the weapon that looks and feels the best, there's just something about using this thing now that feels a whole lot smoother. 
The animation of Gordon loading in more shells looks really detailed. And I love how you can even see the weapon strap as well, which is also animated realistically. There's iron sights added in now too, well, kind of, though it's more like a zoom than traditionally aiming down sights. I think I actually prefer this to traditional iron sights, only because it doesn't limit my field of view as much, and I can still be somewhat aware of things in my peripheral vision. But you can turn on proper iron sights too, if that's more your cup of tea. Either way though, it does vastly improve your aim. Speaking of gameplay options, there's the choice to improve enemy AI too, which didn't seem to change things all that much. All I noticed was that they lobbed grenades my way a fair bit more, and some enemies during earlier chapters are now armed with the pulse rifle. The Combine can now use the grenade launcher on the MP7, which is cool, kind of, but you don't really get that much of a warning they're going to do it. And the moment that you realise is usually right after you've caught one with your face. It'd be good if at least they telegraph this attack in some way. I don't know, maybe like slap me on the ass or something before you ram it home. Probably one of the biggest game changes though is that you can swap the way that guns handle from hit scanning to actual projectiles, with different guns having bullet drop, bullet spread and penetration over various distances. Now why this is turned off by default I have no idea because it's the coolest feature of the whole mod. This is pretty damn big and it changes how the shooting feels in a fundamental way. Honestly, I never thought the shooting in Half-Life 2 was all that good. It largely got carried by a few weapons like the Magnum, the Crossbow and the alternate fire for the MP7 and the Shotgun, which gave it the illusion of being really deep and enjoyable. Because otherwise it really was just standard hit scanning combat, point at something and shoot. Half-Life 2 is a game that's more stood the test of time because of the pacing of its campaign and environmental storytelling, more than its groundbreaking shooting mechanics. I mean, it had a serviceable shooting system and that's all there was to it. So in the vanilla game, there wasn't really any point to being all that mobile or strafing around considering taking damage was more or less based off line of sight with certain enemies. Weapon spread would affect the gunplay over long distances, but you really just traded bullets with the enemy until they dropped to the ground like a bag of shit. So for a change like this to be added into this mod with bullets having actual ballistics makes the combat feel a whole lot more enjoyable. There is an actual purpose to staying mobile and keeping your distance, it just feels a whole lot better. On top of all of that shit, you can even choose what kind of bullet spread you want with three different options, along with whether or not aiming down sights is going to be a factor too. It's a simple but welcome addition to a shooting system that was really starting to show its age. In fact, it showed its age back in 2004. So if there's one setting in this mod you have to try, well, this is it. Visually, there's a bunch of new things added in too. Some of them so subtle you probably won't even notice them, but your brain did. Things like the combine eyes glowing a bit more to make it easier to spot them. There's more blood decals and more saturation to make the overall image a lot more vibrant. You can turn up the view distance as well, which is only really useful on chapters like Highway 17 and Sand Traps. You can even simulate lens dirt, which makes the sides of the screen look covered with grime and dust. Anybody? No. Dust. Anybody? No. Dust. Particle effects can also be played around with as well, and this is the shit right here. You probably already noticed from my footage, but the explosions look a whole lot better. The explosions already looked pretty solid in vanilla Half-Life, so to somehow be able to dial that up to 11 is pretty impressive. I don't think I could ever get sick of throwing a red barrel at someone's head with a gravity gun. It's like crack in video game form. Fire effects look way more detailed too. Some of the areas in Ravenholm just look gorgeous. Never thought I'd say this, but the sight of an incinerated headcrab zombie walking around is actually nice to look at. You even get a bit of haze from the extreme heat of the flames too, it just looks great. And it gives you even more of a reason to shoot those strategically placed red barrels. Those short sections in Water Hazard when the airboat has the gun attached to it shows off some really cool looking effects too. Like when you're blowing up those APCs and taking down the Hunter Chopper. I'd love to be able to jack this stuff up even more, but I can still appreciate the increase in carnage. Overall, the image looks a lot sharper too. Like, I wouldn't say it's necessarily better, it just looks different. One thing about Half-Life 2 is that somehow it still looks really good anyway. So you don't really need to do all that much stuff to the engine to make it look halfway decent in the current year. This was due to Valve really knowing what the hell they were doing with architecture and level design. And as a result, the base game is still pretty solid. 
Like the water effects in this mod have supposedly been improved, but the water already looks so damn good in the vanilla version that it's just like putting another layer of icing on a cake that's already got icing on it. Just one thing I will say, don't play the game with motion blur on or any of that crap, or else you're dead to me. Part of the reason I like this mod so much is that it doesn't fuck around with the core of Half-Life 2, or that much anyway. I mean, it makes a few modifications here and there, but it never changes the game in a fundamental way. And the changes that it does make seem like ones more out of common sense and convenience. I like how now the flashlight has its own separate meter, like what they did in Episode 2. Instead of sharing it with your stamina and air supply, which never made any goddamn sense. Why Valve thought this was a good idea from day dot is a mystery. Character models are also untouched, compared to a mod like the Cinematic mod, where you can make Alex look like a Victoria's Secret model, with a fully modelled cervix and a giant dildo in a bedroom. You can fine-tune all of these settings to get it to however you'd personally like to play the game, and there is a whole heap of stuff to play around with. You could argue that things like the emplacement gun and the pulse rifle do make those earlier sections easier than they're supposed to be, but I mean, both weapons are situational. And besides, it's not like someone's going to play this mod for a first time playthrough. At this point, I'm only playing Half-Life 2 to dull the pain from realising we'll never get a proper sequel. You can actually play this thing with Cinematic Mod 2 if you really want to, but that's like ordering a bowl of expensive soup and then getting the chef to dip his nuts into it before serving it. M Mod is just like someone's gone back in and polished things up. It's like the maid in a hotel who's coming to clean things up after a weekend long bender. Only she took 15 years to get around to servicing the room instead of doing it overnight. There are some improvements I think they could add in in future updates. Like I'd really like to see the option for a grenade throw button, bound to maybe Q or G, so I can just lob out a quick grenade during combat. Off the back of that, the option for a quick melee attack would be good too. Just a quick melee attack bound to F or something so you don't have to swap out to the crowbar. Just to mash through a crate or a piece of furniture that's blocking your way. Maybe also being able to attach yourself to a ladder like in more recent shooters and actually seeing the animation of Gordon climbing up it. I mean this whole thing of magically moving up or down a ladder without using your hands is about as dated as it comes. It's too bad the mod can't fix it so the resistance soldiers don't always box you in either. Or that they can't get Alex off my dick in episode 1. Seriously, I know she's supposed to be infatuated with Gordon and I don't blame her, but geez lady, give the man some room. Apparently another update for the mod is still in the works, planned for release either in 2020 or 2021. And they'll probably have this done and dusted before Black Mesa is finished as well. Overall, M mod is kinda hard to fault. It adds in enough new stuff to justify playing through Half-Life 2 again, but doesn't add in all that stuff to the point of ludicrousy. And if someone told me that Valve had added all this new content in officially, well, I'd probably believe it. So if you're looking for a reason to replay Half-Life 2, if even just to forget the fact that we're never going to play a third main game in the series, well, Sunny Jim, there are worse ways to go about it. The mod is free, it runs without a hitch, and it does everything it says it's going to do. And you can't really ask for more than that. <laughs>